Hello and welcome to Build Series Sydney. I'm your host, Danny Clayton. Now, very soon we're going to be talking with some special guests, but coming out August 8th, Danger Close, the Battle of Long Tan in cinemas. Let's take a quick peek. Please, welcome to Build, Travis Fumel and Luke Bracey. Boys, it's good to have you here. How are you feeling? Oh, good. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. So last night, uh, the premiere happened here in Sydney. Uh, People are raging about this film. Um, Did you celebrate? Did you have a good time? How did it feel to get this body of work out there into the world? Uh, It's it's been a great experience. um, I I feel like it's got a great message for uh, Australians and um, obviously not a great message being a war, but uh, just of of mateship and um, it's a... um, I feel like the the younger generations is a good film for them to uh, learn about what a lot of grandfathers did, a lot of fathers did. Yeah, yeah before we get dark, I mean, uh, you did touch on something right here. It, yeah, sure, it's a war film, but I think at its core, it is uh, about friendship. It's about mates. It's about taking care of, of each other. Mm-hmm. So were you guys all friends prior uh, to this film or was there some sort of stage of broing down? Was there team building involved? Well, it's, you know... When you're getting involved, you don't know everyone before you start working together. You do a little like prep week to learn, you know, about all the weapons and stuff like that, and have a couple of beers and, and get to know each other. But when you're dealing with something like this, it's 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 pretty easy to just jump. Everyone jumps on board straight away. You, like, you, the significance of what we're doing, we're playing real guys that a lot of them are still alive, and uh, it's an, an incredible story. Just ordinary blokes in an extraordinary situation. So you feel the responsibility of that. And um, so, you know, everyone kind of jumps on board straight away. You know the, the importance of what you're making here. So it's pretty easy to everyone come in and be on the same team from the get-go. Great. Oh, so you do like each other? Uh, or you're yeah, just pretending the film. Trav, you know, is Luke a good guy? I mean, tell me, what, what should we know about this dude? Oh, he means well. <laughs> yeah. no, he's a great bloke. We'd actually met before in, uh, yeah. in America. We had a mutual friend. Yeah, we had yeah. a couple of beers. Yeah. That was a few years before. Yeah. yeah. Well, they all make me feel... All the a couple of the younger actors make me feel pretty old on this <laughs> set. But it's amazing that the, the average age is 20. Mm. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah, Nicholas, uh, you know, he's... No, he n- turned 18 he, on he, set. He, he, he turned 18, uh, 18 while 18 filming. On the prep week. 18 shoot? on yeah. the prep week and we made him turn 18. <laughs> <laughs> how, does, how does one make someone yeah. turn 18? It wasn't a real name. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I mean, like, you know, you're on set with these guys who are the same age as these yeah. soldiers. So that must be, like, uh, you know, quite a, a strange thing to contemplate. Well, it's unbelievable. What were you doing when you were 20? Playing Nintendo? Yeah, exactly. exactly. You know, but it feels like people freak out when they lose their phone for a day. Mm. You know, these kids are off fighting wars, watching their mates get killed. and. Mm. They're all conscripted as well. You know, most of them conscripted as well. You know, they didn't have a choice. Yeah. They're just over there trying to help bring their mates home back alive you know it's it's kind of mind-boggling and then also to talk to these guys now because as i said a lot of them are still with us and uh it's like it happened to them yesterday yeah it's like it happened yesterday this is this is something like the battle maybe took about four hours yeah 53 years ago and it's affected them every day of their life since and and they talk about it like it was yesterday yeah and because that is very uh quite a unique experience for actors i'm guessing it's like you're not playing characters Mm. you're you're playing people so, and you both had a chance to, to meet your people. So, I mean, I'll, I'll start with you, Trav. What was it like uh, meeting uh, a Sergeant Harry Smith or Commander? Uh, major, Major. Ma- major to Harry be honest, Smith. I don't reckon he liked me that much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's a very quiet fella. He's very uh, sort of um, a hard fella. And and he was uh, in charge of training all the younger ones. So he did it with a lot of tough love and... Um, mm. And uh, you know a, a lot of the um, well, all of the soldiers that, f- that fought with him as, uh, and have survived have um, all given him big props, you know, and said mm. we couldn't have got through without him. And uh, thanks for being so hard on him. Yeah, I mean, we can see that quite early on in the film, uh, especially with the way that your character um, responds with uh, Daniel's uh, character, yeah. uh, uh, which is quite aggressive uh you know so you're playing this guy on set who is generally pretty intimidating um to keep the other actors you know responding correctly to you did you almost have to be a little bit darker on set were you a little bit unapproachable to get that reaction from these other characters no not i've never been one of those ones that do act between 
stay in character or whatever. The only thing that matters is between action and cut, right? Yeah. Mm. I have enough trouble trying to remember my lines. <laughs> like, trying to do it between takes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. They make, I feel, they make me feel old anyway. Mm. Young kids running around. Young whippersnappers. Excited to be there. And their phones. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you're just there. Oh, another day at work. Oh, oh, no. This isn't Vikings, but yeah. whatever. <laughs> just, um, yeah. What about you? I mean, uh, how did you get in, into your you know, person rather than character? I mean, what kind of research was involved? Um, there's actually uh, kind of some amazing stuff out there. I think the Australian War Memorial have a website <coughs> where they've, they've actually interviewed interviewed numbers of veterans from 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 many of the many of the uh conflicts that australia's been in and basically bob buick there there's about a four and a half hour of him talking about his life he's like you know starting from when he was born and just talks all about his life so that is a fantastic place for me to start and then also the writer Stuart Beatty. i mean he's an f- amazing amazing writer he's one of the best writers australia's ever produced if not the best i mean he wrote collateral and and uh, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean and mm. Australia and stuff. So he's a genius. And so he's done a lot of great research. And so a lot of the stuff is right there for you. And, um, and yeah, it's, it, that's kind of the, the main stuff I did, which was good. And, and then you're just trying to be truthful and tell the truth every, every take. Um, mm. uh, that was good. I got to meet Bob and his, his family uh, the other day as well and sit down and have a chat with them. And I kind of asked him and his family, like, oh... So how did I do, Bob? He's like, yeah, yeah, you were good. And his son goes, yeah, yeah, you're a bit nice. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, yeah. But um, no, they 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 loved it, and and that was a, I was pretty nervous, mm. hoping that they would um, respond to it and 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 kind of be happy with the job I did. But thankfully, he was. So yeah, um, yeah that was a big weight off. I've been I've been stressed about that for a year uh, since we filmed it. <laughs> sure. I mean, do you think this is an important story for young people to know? Is this something that we should be carrying Com- through the generations? Completely. It's a it's a travesty that more Australians don't know about this, and and the travesty is that. You know, this was <clears throat> 108 Australian and New Zealanders surrounded on all sides by an estimated force of 2,000. Yeah. Very well trained North Vietnamese army. Um, and two years after the battle, the American government gave Delta Company of the 6th RAR uh, a unit citation for gallantry, which is one of the best, uh, most prestigious uh, awards that can be uh, bestowed on a unit. Mm. And that was two years after the battle. Yep. And it took the Australian government 45 years wow. until they gave them the same recognition. And that took Mar- uh, Major Smith 45 years of lobbying and lobbying and lobbying to get the recognition for these boys mm. yeah. that sacrificed so much. And were shunned when they and got home. And were shunned when they got home. They weren't, they, some, they weren't allowed to go to yeah. RSLs and stuff like yeah. that. I mean, yeah, my history book suggests that yeah, they were ostracised uh, when they returned. And they were... Um, yeah, they were just kids trying to, literally the whole goal was the the ones that were spoken to mm. was just to get home mm. and get their mates home. They were not there for any political reason or anything. And then to go through all that and then come home and be shunned and... Brutal. Yeah, it's pretty brutal. On so, the yeah, we're kind of pretty proud that, you know, this is a small part of getting the recognition that they really deserve in that way. And, um, yeah, after after such a long time, I'm glad that people will be able to learn more about this battle i mean maybe people have heard about it but um but i think it's really important not just for the younger generation but even <laughs> everyone i think i think this is a story that australians and new zealanders and and stuff need to need to know about and need to mm. know it's a quintessentially australian story it's about boys trying to take care of each other about mateship and you know n- not thinking about you thinking about the bloke next to you and him thinking about you and uh, leaving leaving yourself kind of at the door, and I think that's important in today's society. You know, we're all pretty wrapped up in ourselves, and this is a good little thing to to remind you that the world's a bit bigger than you. Mm. Um, and while watching the film, I just recall having this constant feeling of of dread. Um, it was almost like at any given moment, something really, really awful could happen. Which, uh, no spoilers here, it, it quite often does. Um, so while we're we're talking about that tension, how how did Mr. Stender, you know, the, the director, create that feeling on set? Because some directors trust the actors and say, "You guys do it. You guys do the work." But other directors really uh, help in creating tension while filming. Oh, well, he's uh, have you seen Police Academy? <laughs> um, the, uh, yeah, uh, they might be too young for uh, that. <laughs> Winslow, the guy that makes all the sounds. Yeah. So that's that's what. Cruise, 
Shreve did mostly. He tell, like, there's a bomb coming in and it'd be... <laughs> in a yeah. big megaphone <laughs> and he'd do the machine guns because it, nobody's shooting at you obviously so he'd be off set doing a machine gun noises and the microphone and all that. And a big speaker mm. yeah and then That's he'd always fun. forget that his fingers on the button so he's know. constantly making noise yeah. through a, yeah, a big uh, PA system yeah, we're, we're like, talking uh, here he'd be like what the hell did Travis is, what is he doing <laughs> Yeah, Isn't that more comical than scary? Uh, you know, it's like, I, oh, we were, we're trying not to laugh we're a lot of the time. Yeah. And yeah. he's like, it's raining, it's raining. He's like, no shit, mate. You got the, <laughs> you got the rain machines on. You don't have to. <laughs> 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 yeah. No, but he's such a, uh, not one bad thing to say, other than his sound effects. Not one bad <laughs> thing to say mm. about. No, he did he's did such a great job. fella and yeah, did an amazing job. And, and um, he had a lot of pressure on him. You know, there's a lot mm. of us, a big cast and... A lot to deal with, and uh, oh, mm. it's such a great bloke. Yeah, it was you know making a movie in the best of times is difficult, and and then to make something like this with you know just so many moving parts, especially these battle scenes, it's just they're difficult to get everything right and everything in the right position. And when you don't have a huge, huge budget like the Americans uh, films have, you know sometimes you have one shot at things. You know you've got you've got eight, ten explosions going off, you got one take to do it and um so everyone's there on on pretty you know <laughs> wanting to get it right and so creve as the captain of the ship you know he kept a calm head through it all and that's kind of what you need as a director as someone who's kind of cruisy not cruisy but like calm and collected and and, and everyone takes their lead from him so as a director he was, he was amazing that way and and you know yeah we were, we all felt the the gravity of of what we were doing so it's pretty pretty easy getting and the crew was amazing yeah. too and and the extras were... Um, yeah, the extras we had, that was another thing that was amazing, was we had some... Uh, all the extras in the film were Iraq and Afghanistan veterans. Wow. And there's a company up in the Gold Coast called Extra Specialists, run by a bloke called Sean Barry, who takes in... He was in, actually... He was in Delta Company 6 RAR, uh, just, you know, by coincidence in that way. And he started this company where he gets Iraq and Afghanistan veterans and other veterans to come in and teaches them to be stuntmen and and kind of as extras in, in films and they also did I don't know how many th how many hundreds or thousand hours of unpaid work building the whole set of the camp in Nui Dat they were filling sandbags veterans would come in from all over the country and fill sandbags mm. and build the set and, and do all that work just because they want to be a part of it and so when you're on set and you've got these guys next to you you know it was just another another level um uh, to help us, to help us try and understand what's level like. of authenticity. Yeah, um, completely. You know, probably would have felt real. Absolutely, for you guys. Um, I mean, I was fortunate enough to see some of the pre-production stunt just demos. So this is early, early, early stuff, and it, it looked insane. There's guys flying through the air and smacking into big blue trees, um, and it was just wild. And this was just a practice for the real thing. So. I'm imagining there would have been chaos on set. What was it like uh, watching all this go down? Did you get involved in some of these stunts? Well, yeah, I mean, we're falling over a lot and crawling on our bellies and stuff like that. But mm. um, no, real credit goes to all the boys that were um, uh, portraying the, 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 the North Vietnamese guys. Um, yep. They had to do some really, really intense physical stuff. And, you know, they're on wires and, as you said, getting thrown into trees and stuff like that and doing it. Day after day after day after day. So, you know, I've got a lot of respect for those guys. Anyone who's a, who's a stuntman and has fallen over like that, they take some big, big hits mm. and um, make us look, look really tough when, mm. we, when we're not so much tough. Yeah. I mean, you guys went through boot camp, though, didn't you? You did some, some training prior. Yeah. did some. Oh, uh, I went to uh, Perth and just went to a place called The Mill where a couple of SAS boys were. But I'd lucky, I was a major. I didn't have to do much. <laughs> Just tell people what Did to do. Did you consider, like, uh, am I a grunt or am I a major? Can I sit yeah, down? Yeah, or do yeah. I need to train for this film? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not I'm not good with that stuff anyway. I'm, I'm more of a... Uh, You're such an intellectual, Travis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not quite that either, but I'm a rester. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I'm not I'm not into the physical. Okay. Because um, I was once told, but I think Russell Crowe once said that the, the films that are comedies, generally they become a can be a bit of a drag. Everyone just assumes that the comedies are the most fun to shoot, but it was generally the ones that are really, really serious, horror films and dramas, they're the ones that you end up having the most fun on set. Uh, would you agree with Russell Crowe or is Russell Crowe lying? And remember, 
he could be watching this. Oh, uh, every movie's different, you know. Every job. Hey, Russ, different. I'm actually looking for a job, yeah, mate. Yeah, Russ. So, uh, <laughs> me and Trav are unemployed at the moment, so that'd be good. Um, no, every film's different, and I think I think when you're doing a, an intense movie, whatever it is, there's a there's a certain pressure valve that's got to be released, mm. and um, and if you don't have that release, I think it be, it can become very tight. Um, so there's always, you know, a nice breath and pulse, and we used to, you know. One thing we did as a as a group of guys, you're not filming, not filming in every every scene. So there's a group of us, you know, fifteen odd blokes. Sometimes there's one or two people on camera, and the rest of us kind of sitting around. And mm. these days with phones, um, but one of the things we did, I used to bring in the the papers every day, and we'd sit and do the crosswords together, so that like when we weren't no, but so so the boys were together, so like so that when you're upset, no one was on their phones and, and yeah. by themselves, so that we had this. I never got the invite to yeah, this. <laughs> I can't, but I can't imagine too, him doing crosswords. Just too intellectually, just do them all, and it ruined the fun. Yeah. I must have been resting, or you came and did some resting craft Talking services. About. Um, but yeah, no, just like those things that create the, not create it, but like it was just, a, we, we felt like the want to be around everyone and, and to have fun. And, and that was one of the things, you know, like the boys, the there's a great humour from these veterans, you know, like that's how you kind of get through things like this is they're funny guys, like Major Smith's funny dude and like, mm. and, and all the, the Iraq and Afghanistan guys are all great guys and there's a humour to it that you kind of need to get through stuff like this gallows humor for lack of a better term mm. um but uh yeah. the real vets were funny yeah. is that the funny funny, the funny. boys in in this battle mm. we were trying to we, we were out late with them one yeah. night <laughs> and we're trying to encourage <laughs> them boys, boys you reckon we should go home you know what yeah they, they were out doing they us. gave it a, they gave us a nudge that's yeah. for sure. <laughs> yeah. great guys yeah, all right so who won that drinking battle was it the vets or was it the buoys <laughs> they give me a whooping in uh two up Oh really? To be honest, yeah, and that, yeah, they got me. I'd had enough where they had, they definitely beat me in that. <laughs> they knew what they were doing. Okay, so what were some of the highlights besides drinking with the vets? What were some of the highlights of making the film for you guys? Meeting them really. Yeah, yeah free lunch and meeting the guys. That <laughs> did it? Free lunch. <laughs> it was the best. best Every day. Best catering I ever had on a job. I'll tell you that much. I can't remember what the company was called, but they were great. Yeah, no, they were amazing. It's yeah, sure, let's talk about it. Let's talk about the food. What kind of food are you guys eating? Uh, what no, makes good just, catering? No, it was just Free, like fresh and quality. Yeah. Yeah. It was good. No, but it's, it's kind of, a, it's kind of fun, a weird bit, but, you know, the crew the crew we had was unreal. Mm. Like, that's the guys behind the scenes picking up all the heavy stuff and putting the cameras down and, you know, making sure that it's all in the right place. And <clears throat> that's one great thing about working in Australia is that the crews are so professional. Mm. They know exactly what they're doing. There's a no-nonsense attitude to it. And um, so that was always great. You know, it's a fun thing about making these. You meet a lot of people and, and it's like the team aspect of it. It's like yeah. playing a sport, a team sport. Yeah. And this is good. It's actually most films are just kind of fluff or whatever, but the meaning with this film was important and, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, let's you know, face it. You guys have both been in in major productions uh, I- in other countries, uh, so obviously you've had a fair bit of experience working w- with other crews. So it's it's good to hear that the Australian squads uh, can really hold up the standards. But uh, I would love to talk to you about some other films. Um, I mean, uh, firstly with you, I guess uh, I live <laughs> next door to a, a ginormous mural of Bodhi from Point Break. Uh, any Australian who surfs reveres uh, the Point Break film as, you know, the, a, a Bible, a mecca of, of surf films. Uh, what was that like uh, for you to be involved in, I guess, one of the greatest surfing films of all time? Yeah, I mean, I grew up on the beaches in the northern beaches of Sydney and I watched that movie. You're once a freshie boy, weren't you? Yeah, freshie. Um, I grew up there and I watched that movie once a week, my whole childhood. Yeah. And then one day I got the call saying, they're, they're looking at you for maybe Point Break and a few other guys ago. Yeah, that no one else, mate. I'm going to make this movie. And I'm pretty I sure I went surfing with you one time. Yeah, probably. Like yeah, really, really long ago. Yeah, yeah. Do you still shred? That's the question. Ah, uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I still surf. Yeah, I mean, once a surfer, always a surfer. It's like riding a bike. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no. So that was that was uh, awesome experience for me. And then also just like that movie was really cool. I got to go a lot, a lot of places and and meet a lot of cool people. And mm. that was a great experience. That one. Yeah. Was it intimidating going into something that you knew held such a big part in every surfer's? You know, they're all intimidating. Mate. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you did loads of your own stunts because uh, uh, as films go, that's a pretty stunt-heavy uh, film. I mean, was it physically taxing? Yeah, it, it really was. I mean, like I did everything up until 
the pros took over, you know, and mm. uh, we had the world's best doing it. But yeah, I, the gnarliest one was was hanging off Angel Falls. So that was pretty hectic. Yeah, I was about a kilometer above the earth, hanging off a rock, mm. hoping, just saying, like trusting the guys, saying that the rope's gonna hold me. <laughs> Before I went over the edge, I'm, they're like, oh, are you ready? I'm like, turn that camera on, because if I go, it better be on film. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's really dark. Um, yeah. I made it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, Trav, I, I just noticed that you were stroking your beard very delicately. Uh, I, I love the beard. Um, it, it, it's lovely. I just wanted to inform you that right now in the room, we have the million-dollar beard, Mr. Jimmy Niggles. Jimmy Niggles? Jimmy Niggles. With the million-dollar beard. Uh, round of applause for Jimmy Niggles, everybody. <laughs> He's a gentleman who uh, is raising a lot of money uh, for Beard Season, uh, which is uh, addressing skin cancer. So oh, he, on, he's mate. actually you, my uh, beard role model. Um, and so I, I noticed that you were... Uh, tell me what kind of work goes into that. It, is that a million-dollar beard or is it no, just a, a cheap $10 I'm sorry, $10 I, was beard. I was sorry I was stroking it in front of everyone too. I no, didn't no, it's... It was um, very Gandalf. You just... I thought you were thinking about something very yeah, deep. No, no, again, mistaken with this thinking thing. Yeah. <laughs> Um, no, that's a great bit, mate. Great call. Uh, that wasn't well a real done. question. Uh, I'll roll on. Um, look, so uh, I guess like the the last rule, uh, you know, Vikings, where we, you were sporting a, a delightful haircut and, and that beard. But moving on next, we've got uh, something that's completely different from Vikings, which is futuristic cyborg robot machines. I hear that you're getting involved uh, with the team that put together Blade Runner. What can you tell us about this particular project? Um, to be honest, I've been on it for five months and I have no idea what it's about <laughs> 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 but I play a human it's very uh, um, it's called Raised by Wolves yes uh, which some I'm getting a scary thought that I might know more about it than you do <laughs> you signed up for it don't be scared buddy just yeah. go with it the um yes yeah, Raised by Wolves a Ridley Scott thing um, which is is just amazing and I was always want to work with him and got the chance to do it. It's about um, the earth uh, becomes un uninhabitable and uh, we find a planet to live on and then of course as people do with politics and everything everybody bickers and we all fight and we'll probably have to move to another planet after that you mm. know. Do you think this is a realistic film? Should we be worried? Uh, should we start uh, using yeah. those reusable cups? Yeah, well, it's pretty well like that. Yeah, it's all the same stuff. Uh, uh, a lot of religion-based mm. stuff on Earth that creates all the tension. And um, pretty well, there's one spaceship left, and um, my character um, infiltrates it and goes up with the enemy, and mm. and then has to live within the people that killed all his family. Yeah. You know? So it seems like you've got a really diverse range of characters you know i mean even if we just address your, your soldier character here a viking cyborg futuristic is this something you intentionally do to to make things hard I for you or is no just i just <laughs> need a job <laughs> yeah, <laughs> get it you know and working you know for a ridley uh yeah project i mean what what must that be like for you no it was awesome no it was great uh it's like as a as an actor you sort of yearn to work with people like that it's uh, been a great experience and um, yeah, definitely hopefully i didn't mess it up too much on him okay um and of course luke you've got some uh, big things I in the future uh coming up as well um you like to keep yourself pretty busy what's the next big project for you my friend i, d I just finished a job uh, a bit different to this and a bit different to cyborgs i just did a romantic comedy actually and that was really fun i've never done one before you so dreamboat. So it was. <laughs> Stop Sorry. It. I'll, I'll give you that. That was supposed to be my inside voice. <laughs> I'll give you that fifty bucks later, mate. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I just got back from Splendor. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so nah, it's a rom com. Yeah, romantic uh, comedy. Me and me and Emma Roberts, and uh, I never done it before, and it was yeah, a bit different to this. You know, you just kind of rolling around, laughing all day, and they're kind of shorter days, and it was just fun. I got to play an Australian as well, so. Made life a little bit easier. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah, no, just like, I've been lucky to do a bunch of different stuff as well. So, yeah, I've got a little thing i got to do next as well. There's been some rumours about James Bond too. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Trav. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, Trav just made that up. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Trav? It's hey. been a real pain in my ass right now. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm here to help the Aussies, mate. Um, oh, Trav, yeah. I do have a, a question for you. It's come in online. Um, uh, Travis, uh, it's rumoured uh, that uh, a character on Sex and the City is based on you. Is that true? Wouldn't be a rumour if it was true. Okay. Is, is it true? No. Definitely not? Okay. Um, now, I've got another one. Can you... Uh, <laughs> Uh, Anonymous has sent in a question which I kind of don't want to ask, but um, Travis, can you uh, please explain the mullet? Uh, what's what's the inspiration behind the mullet here? Um, it's just just a bad haircut, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've had plenty of worse haircuts, but uh, I was for the for for the futuristic thing. Oh, is it? Is it about yeah, the character? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you think that uh, people yeah. in the future will be sporting mullets? For sure, mate. For sure, for sure. Sweet. Um, did you train with Aussie soldiers to prepare for this film? Yeah, I went with a few SAS boys. They run a, a gym and a training facility in Perth called The Mill. Okay. Great fellas. Okay, another one from uh, another anonymous person. Travis, uh, do you make it home to Akuna? Achuga. Achuga. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I love, I love home. Uh, you know, I call this the Achuga Waterfall. <laughs> in the back here. The uh, no, but I love um love g- coming home. We had a farm there for years, and it's uh, my favourite place. You know, Achuga, that's the place where they have the uh, water uh, water skiing. The yeah? Southern Eighty, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about Achuga? Because that's all I, I I really know. Um, Achuga means our uh, meeting of the rivers. Okay. Yeah, obviously the rivers meet there. Yeah, and. Uh, <laughs> But the uh, it's, well, it's known for uh, it was the biggest um, inland port for years, and yeah. um, it's got the paddle steamers. All the did all the rivers run there, so we're pretty we're pretty up there in um, major cities in Australia. Great. Um, how do we make the world recognise Australian film and TV? Is it down to budget? I mean, I think this is a really great question because one of the things I felt uh, about Danger Close is the sheer scale of it. It just felt large, it felt big, it felt real. And uh, I was com- really blown away. Uh, and so when it comes to putting these films out into that international uh, market where there might be bigger budgets, there might be bigger, uh, wilder teams, I mean, how how do we make our mark on the international levels? Well, I mean, <coughs> Australia's got amazing talent when it comes to creative endeavours, you know, and I think... If it's quality, it's quality. And I think that's all that matters. You know, I think we, we've got unique stories and characters from this country. We've got great directors, we've got great writers, we've got we've got awesome actors. So, you know, I think we've got James a, Bond. <laughs> <laughs> and um and I think you know that like a whole team of people have already yeah, we're tweeted pushing. out. Can that we please news. push it? Uh, yeah. I think you'd make a great James Bond, but you know, sorry back to what you're saying. So, I hope so too. <laughs> you'd be great, man. <laughs> That'd be great. I'm half, my mum. My mum's originally English, so that's all right. Yeah. I'm I'll good. Get, I'll be getting I'll some of that pay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can be agent. a great money. Penny. You're my new agent, yeah. Trav. Yeah. Thank you, mate. Um, um, there's there's incentives that um, tax incentives and such that uh, states do. Queensland doing a lot at the moment. Mm. So hopefully a few other states. Yeah, yeah. I think it's just putting ourselves out there, and and you know we got such quality. Like w- this is a great example of what we can do mm. with not as much as everyone else has got. And um, and so I think if we just keep finding these unique strange stories, these 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 quality people involved in them, and you know, for Trav and I, it's we go overseas to we've been lucky enough to make some jobs overseas, but all we want to do is come home and and work here and and mm-hmm. and tell Australian stories. And I I feel so privileged. This is my first Australian story. Like I couldn't have asked or hoped or wished for a more important story to be my first Australian story I tell. So yeah, if if we can just yeah make make sure that we're telling these stories because we, we are a unique country and we shouldn't try and do what other people do. We should do our thing and we should follow that because that's what makes this country great. It's, it's, a, it's a unique place and there's nowhere else like it. So if we keep finding these great stories and, and these great people involved in them, we should be onto a winner. Well said, mate. That's a bang on the money, I think. Um, a final question from the, from the crowd, uh, which is how do you divide your own feelings towards war in contrast to playing these characters? I think every war movie is an anti-war movie, really. I yeah. mean, you watch this movie, you don't want to be there. I think every war movie I've watched, it makes me not want to be there. So, look, war's hell and this movie's not about 
whether it's right or wrong or whether this one was right or wrong this movie is about the boys that are actually involved in it and and that's <laughs> the end of the day you know it's ordinary guys in extraordinary circumstances that they didn't really put themselves in so mm. <coughs> that's that's the message of this story for me it's not about that other stuff it's about the guys that were there and that's what they deserve i think and that's at the end of the day the human face of it it's mm. these 20 year old guys that were conscripted to go over there yeah. and just trying to get home so yeah this movie is about them yeah and, and it seems like you're both quite proud of this film which you should be and you seem to think that this is an important message for people to take home so um, when people get a chance to, to watch this film what do you want them to take from it what's something that you'd like them to learn Travis um, it's just a respect for what these guys did and um like we said, they were shunned when they came came back and it was nothing to do with them. And the 20 year old kids that was gone through more than anybody at that age should ever go through. And mm. uh, and it's kind of a message. I don't know, I'm always so proud of the mateship of Australia. Like It's like the true definition of mates, what they did for each other there and to survive and uh, to get their friends home. And a, a big part of the film was always, don't worry about yourself, just worry about the person next to you. Mm. You know, and he's worrying about you. So it's a, I don't know, there's a very unselfish thing to, everybody's caught up in their own world these days and forget about the person next to them, you know. Mm. So the real message from this movie? Was to put your phone down. Put your phone down. <laughs> Take care of your mates. Uh, Travis, Luke, it has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for joining me here on Build Series Sydney. Round of applause to the boys. Thank you. Make sure you check out Danger Close, The Battle of Long Tan, coming out August 8th. Cheers. Thank you, guys. Thank you.